demonstration of a that's a demonstration of a basic law of physics that you almost never hear what you think you're listening to uh, a musical instrument or any sound at all because what you hear is the original sound plus what's called its acoustic imprint now that's what happens to the sound between the time when it originates and the time that it gets to your ear now the imprint is dictated almost totally by the environment in which it's made and it's the bane of any architect's life when he's trying to design a music studio like this one, the BBC studio at Maida Vale, or a concert hall. Because no matter how carefully he designs, there's no way of him knowing in advance, in detail, what the hall will do to the sounds made in it. There are lots of intervening factors. For example, the structure of the hall itself will reflect or absorb sound in different ways. An audience will absorb sound. A choir will make and absorb sound, and the orchestra will make, absorb, and reflect the sound. So the poor old architect doesn't know the awful truth until the day when somebody first goes... And by that time, it's too late. Now, a sound engineer like the one in the control room here at the Maidavell studio, can go a long way to helping solve his problem. He can electronically balance the characteristics of the hall to match whatever kind of music's being played here, from a soloist to intimate chamber music to full orchestra. But if the place is bad to start with, there's not much that even he can do. Ideally, what you'd like would be to provide some system whereby you could tell what the hall would sound like before you ever built it. And that's exactly what the BBC Research Department at King's Wood Warren have done. They've rebuilt the Maida Vale studio, only this time they've built it to one-eighth scale. This is it. Now, all the material that goes to make up this tiny studio, the carpets, the flooring, the walls, the ceiling, all these ramps here, are made of specially chosen materials that will reflect or absorb the sound produced in here exactly to scale. So, for example, the sound produced here will go to that wall and exactly a scale amount of it will come back here. And they've even gone down as far as considering the effect of the presence of the player himself. So, thank you, that, to scale, is me. Now, all that's left is the sound. Can I have the guitar? If I play the guitar in here... It sounds like a guitar being played in a box, which is, after all, what it is. And that's because the sound itself isn't scaled like the rest of the studio. Now, to scale the sound, you have to shorten the wavelength eight times. And to do that, you record the sound and play it back eight times faster. But it's not quite as simple as that. Well, to start with, the sound has to have absolutely no acoustic imprint. And to show you what a really big imprint is, like an echo in this special reverberation chamber, try this for size. Now, if you do exactly the same thing with exactly the same revolver outside, you get a totally different sound. You get a sound with virtually no acoustical imprint, like this. Now, I say virtually none because there are factors involved. There's reflection from the ground, from these trees all around me, from the wind, the birds, aeroplane noises, and so on. To get the ideal free field conditions, as they're called, theoretically, you'd have to suspend your source of sound an orchestra, a bass, baritone, or me, about 50 feet up, above a totally treeless level plain on a calm day. And you can see the obvious problems involved there. So what you have to do is to try to reproduce these free field conditions artificially. And you do it in this special free field chamber, which produces absolutely no echoes, surrounded by five and a quarter tons of these sound-absorbing special polyurethane wedges. And that's a lot of polyurethane wedges. Now, the sound that you make in here is so pure and so free from imprint that it practically comes out of the instrument you're playing and falls to the ground in front of you. And the scientists here call it, rather aptly, dead sound. That's the kind of sound that you need. So let's record some. <laughs> Olay. 
Now, the music I just played is on this tape. The tape is put on a special tape recorder and played back eight times faster than the speed it was recorded. And that sound comes out through this special array of tiny loudspeakers here. These down here for the bass, these up here for the treble. The whole array set in such a way that the sound goes out into this tiny studio, picks up its uh, special acoustic imprint in all its complexity, and it is then in turn picked up by this tiny microphone here. The whole transaction, so to speak, between the loudspeakers and the microphone sounds like this. Now, that high-speed music is then re-recorded and replayed eight times slower. And what comes out is the product of a concert hall built in full scale exactly like this. And that's the whole point of having rebuilt the Maida Vale studio at one-eighth scale, because the experimenters can then put the two recordings together, one made here and one made in the full-scale studio, and see if there's any difference. And in fact, there isn't. If you listen to the piece that we're going to play, the first half of it was recorded here, the second half recorded in the full-scale Maida Vale studio, and you can't tell the difference. Here it is. <laughs> So there you have it. The Maidavale model has proved the theory. And it would be a bold architect who would go ahead to design any future concert hall or studio without using the model technique, a system that allows you for less than one thousandth of the cost of the completed building to design, and then by moving things around inside your model, so to speak, tune your hall completely before you even lay the first brick. <laughs>